Hey guys, it's Mario here with another video covering that journey to 6% body fat, the journey to getting ripped, getting really, really shredded. And with this video, I wanted to cover the expectations and the reality of things when you're leaning down. Because the reality is, before I dive into some of the symptoms, physiological and psychosocial symptoms that happen as you go leaner and leaner, first off, I wanna say that most guys give up. Most guys don't have the necessary patience to reach this low percent of body fat. And according to your genetics, you might actually have a six pack sooner than 6% body fat, but if you're, if you're unlucky, you might need to lean down really, really low on that body fat percentage in order for you to see a six pack. And for guys, that's very, very different. So I know people who are actually quite fat and you can still see their blocky abs, even if they're higher than 12, sometimes even 15% body fat, you can still see their abs. And I also know guys, and I had clients who had to lean down to extreme levels, even using, we, we tested this with DEXA scans and they were clearly shown to be about 6-7% body fat and they didn't have really good abs that stand out. So just to point that out, and another thing, as I said there, guys don't have the patience because this is a tough journey. Getting to about 10, 11% of body fat, fairly lean, you look okay, nice, but much, much better than mo most people. You look better than 99% of people. At that point, most guys give up because they simply don't have the patience to continue cutting calories and to continue adding more and more cardio. So what I'm gonna discuss in this video a little bit is the expectation and the reality of going from that point of 10% body fat to 6% body fat, to going to that extreme level of body fat that is technically unsustainable all year round, but we do want to push ourselves at some point to reach it, to see how we look, to see how our gains look. And that is what I'm currently doing. I'm on that journey and that's kind of making me a little bit qualified to talk about the symptoms and the symptoms that I'm going to be referring to are quite individual as well. At least some of those psychological symptoms. Physiologically, most of us will experience the same thing. And speaking about physiological changes, the first one you're gonna notice is reduction in testosterone. So that's a quite a normal side effect for a natural. When you're leaning down, you will experience a reduction in testosterone. That is very, very clear from all the evidence from my own experience and from other things, you will definitely experience that. And there's nothing you can do to avoid that. Another thing you will experience physiologically is loss of lean body mass. So now you might heard of some guys saying, well, I leaned down and I didn't lose any muscle mass. Well, either the person didn't lean down lean enough or they're using some form of drugs because a natural lifter will always lose body mass, lean body mass, when they're going down to extreme levels of body fat. You can mitigate this to a very, very high degree if you do a very, very long cut. So if you look at a professional body, professional natural bodybuilder, they might be prepping for, I don't know, they might be dieting for 52 weeks to do a show. That's why they, they can be in a very small deficit and that's why they can retain the most amount of muscle mass because being a natural, the key is really maintaining the lean body mass and that is the hardest thing as someone who is especially eager to get really, really cut, you know, we are kind of impatient. So we cut the calories a lot and then we end up looking very, very small. That's an experience of most competitors and that's an experience of most guys who died for the first time. The second thing, aside from that uh, lean body mass reduction, you will definitely experience a reduction in force production, in strength. And that is normal to experience. And I'm not saying this from a perspective that you're gonna go after a week of dieting or cutting a little bit of calories, you're gonna go to the gym and the bar is gonna fucking press you down. Well, that's not gonna happen. But well, as you diet down, as you go for months and months of dieting after the third, fourth month, you will definitely notice a reduction in strength. That is pretty clear, we know that. You know, There's nothing you can do about it. So just expect that to happen at some point but don't use this as an excuse not to challenge yourself in the gym. Actually, what I personally do when I go to the gym, if I'm on a diet, I'm gonna actually train harder. I'm gonna train a lot harder. I'm gonna push myself even harder because I know that I'm actually fighting versus that adaptation from dieting. So you can expect some of those changes to happen, some of those changes particularly related to reduction in force. And another thing, going deeper into physiological changes, you can definitely experience a, a fast reduction in size. 
So this doesn't really mean that you've lost lean body mass, but as you're reducing the carbs, as you're reducing calories in general, you might look flatter. And you will look flatter and flatter as you diet down longer. And another reason why you would experience a very fast reduction in size is actually when you start burning fat cells, you might start burning those intramuscular triglycerides, which also contribute to the side of the muscle. So as you're burning fat, you might be burning a little bit of quote unquote your size. But that's normal, that happens. Additionally, reduction in carbs, you know, every gram of carbs, every gram of glycogen stores about four grams of water with it, which also makes your muscles look bigger. And imagine your muscles like a balloon, and if you reduce that water content, what is gonna happen? It's gonna shrink a little bit. So it will definitely look smaller at some point, although this is very subjective because some people might actually say that you look bigger, and uh, that happens to me currently, People will say, man, like you look huge. Have you been in a bulk? And I'm actually losing weight for the last couple of months. It's very, very subjective. For some people are bigger, for some people are smaller. Other physiological changes, you will lose a little bit of your libido. And by a little bit, that's the best case scenario. In some cases, specifically my case, I definitely noticed a big, big reduction in sex drive after a certain amount of dieting. After a couple of months, if I'm really, really lean, you will definitely experience some of those reductions. And that might not make your girlfriend happy, not might make people around you happy, but it's definitely something that is happening and that is something to expect. Other things that happen, you're less satiated from eating food. So you're eating the same meal at 6% body fat or 7% body fat as you're dieting down, it will not make you as full as when you're uh, at a higher percentage of body fat those signals are just lowered much more than usual. Other things, you're a lot more hungrier. So you get crazy cravings. Sometimes you get cravings at night. You wanna fucking bite off your hand. That's just what happens. So you can expect this. You can expect hardcore cravings as you go down. And this is the hard part. This is the hardest part. That's why most guys give up. Most guys will give up on this journey because they can't handle these symptoms. And that's the reality. It's not the reality where you're super ripped, you have 6% six, six body fat, you're staying that lean all year round, you're drinking cocktails on a beach, couple of girls like blowing at you, you know, keeping you cool and giving you like a massage or something like that with coconut oil, like keeping it all healthy, you know? And that's, the, that's kind of the expectation, that's kind of the illusion that we get. While in reality, you're at home, you're preparing your chicken breast for tomorrow because you have such a low fat intake and such a low carb intake that you barely can eat anything except protein. That's the reality. In most cases, I'm saying that there are outliers out there who might be able to handle a little bit more calories when they're cutting down. But the truth is, if you're cutting down and you haven't been training about 10, 12 years, you're probably gonna have to reduce your calories. So in the end, you're not gonna be at a high protein, high carb, low fat diet. You're actually gonna be at a low fat, low carb, and moderate protein diet. And that's, that's a very, very hard diet to sustain. We're basically talking that you might have one bigger carb meal throughout the day, barely some fat with it, you know, that the fat that accumulates from cooking and all these other things, and most of your food will be uh, veggies and protein. That's just, this, that's just the reality of things if you want to lean down. And we're talking about, when we're talking specifically calories and your physiological response to them, no matter what you eat, you're going to be more hungry than general. Like that's why we do refeeds. That's why we do these things like diet breaks every once in a while after you reach a certain set point to give yourself that physiological break to recover your hormones, specifically your hormone leptin, which basically allows you to burn uh, more fat. Going into some of the physiological, um, psychological um, expectations and the reality of these things. So people experience that they think that they're gonna be much more motivated to have sex, they're gonna be leaner, they're gonna be stronger, they're gonna be feeling more powerful, less weight holding you down. But in reality, as you lean down from that level of 8% downwards, you're actually gonna be more agitated, more stressed, <laughs> less happy, there can be a total mood degradation there, uh, there can be a lot of other effects that are just making you feel very, very miserable. Other side effects like anxiety can definitely occur, things like body image disorders where you're just looking at yourself in the mirror and you hate yourself, even though you're fucking ripped and you're the best shape in your life, it's never enough. 
eating disorder, borderline eating disorders where you're just super, super obsessed with food, where you're thinking it 90, 100% of the time pretty much about food. When are you gonna have the next meal? What are you gonna have for the next meal? Did you crush your macros? Didn't you crush your macros? You have urges to binge a lot. There's, you, your brain is basically working against you. So your brain like, is fighting for every gram of fat that you're burning, your brain is fighting against you. And like every little instinct that you have in your body is telling you to eat more, to recover, to get on a little bit of fat, to get into those levels, but you have to self-control. And idea there is that meditation helps a lot because it gives you that willpower to actually increase your self-control, to be able to resist some of these things. Other things that are happening, psych uh, psychologically, you might have degradations in the relationships of people around you because you're specific, as you're more anxious, as you're more stressed, you will start seeing that affecting your relationships with other people because you will be less tolerant. You will also start judging other people more. I've noticed this when I was first time, when I was cutting down to like 6-7% body fat, I was like looking around me and everybody was horrible. Like in my mind, I was so judgmental. Like these thoughts just kept coming. And this is where you really need to dig deep and find yourself as that uh, egoless self. You know, you want to look in, into things like Eckhart Tolle, you know, things like where you can really express your true self without looking at that surface level because you will unconsciously start looking only at the surface level because you're so obsessed with body image that you will be judging other people based on their body, which is very, very detrimental to your relationships with other people because most people don't care about being ripped. That is not the priority for most people. You do want to get ripped, but most people don't. So keep that in mind. Like keep in mind that these effects are happening and it's not an easy journey. As I said, most guys give up. Most guys give up because they can't take it. It's not fucking easy. That's why people give up. That's why you don't see people running around being ripped, especially, I mean, people like who are doing it for the first time because they expect everything to be awesome. You know, people generally they expect like, oh, we know so much. We have so many good programs. We have YouTube videos like these and people are like, well, I have all the information, you know, I'm going to do it. But the problem is if you're self coaching yourself, which is a lot of guys watching these videos, they're, they're self coaching themselves. You're too subjective. Like you are the most subjective to yourself. Imagine a doctor trying to treat someone as a member of um, his or her family. You're too subjective. You're not allowed to operate as a surgeon, for example, you will never be allowed to operate on someone from your family because you're too subjective. Your emotions get in the way of you performing your best uh, job that you can do. The same thing is when you're dieting really, really low. Your body, everything, your mind is fighting against you, fighting against that goal and you're too subjective to fight back. You don't have that objective reality. And at that point, it's really, really necessary to have a coach, to have someone telling you it's okay. It's okay if the weight scale hasn't moved down. It, it's fine. You might be retaining a little bit more water, especially if you're a girl. I mean, you could be main, like retaining about five, six pounds of water weight. And it's just a matter of time when that all flushes down and then the weight scale will show a difference. You know, it, there's so many things like even for guys, you know, a couple of pounds per week might simply be water retention. There's so many things here that, that can go wrong and guys panic, you know, guys see, oh, well, the weight scale hasn't gone down, bam, like, let me add more cardio. And what happens, they increase the stress, they increase the cortisol, they actually gain, retain more water. And what happens, they see, oh shit, I'm 1400 calories, 1500 calories, and the weight's going up. What is happening here? Well, look, there's many, many different things and things like your sleep is gonna go bad, which shoots up the cortisol level. As I said, you're more stressed, you're more anxious, all these other things, and it all is working against you, but it is possible. And the reason why I'm making this video, why am I making this video? Look, I have clients who are really leaning down, they're getting to that extreme level of body fat. And when we have these conversations, we have conversations like these ones, the ones I'm talking uh, to you about right now, we have conversations asking them, hey man, how do you feel? How do you feel? What's your relationship with food? What's your relationship with people? How is this affecting you? It really helps to have the right expectations instead of being in that delusion that it's all going to work out perfect and that it's going to be a smooth journey to that really extreme level of body fat. Well, I'm telling you right now, it's not. It's actually really, really hard for most people. And if you're one of those guys who is like, has the perfect genetics, you know, you have no problem maintaining your body fat set point is like, 9% body fat and you have no problem getting to 6%, voila, you know, it's fine, you're an outlier. But for most guys, 
watching this video, including myself, we have an extremely hard time getting to that very, very low body fat percentage. And that's the reality, that's the truth. And I wanted to point this out in this video just so you guys know what to expect. And you have to be willing to pay the price for it. And that's the point of this video is, are you willing to pay the price to fight that reality, to fight those symptoms, to fight your way to success? That is what's gonna be necessary. And I hope this video really reaches you and that you kind of analyze yourself when you're dieting down, am I experiencing these symptoms? Do I feel my libido going down? Do I feel those cravings? Do I feel like I'm more anxious? Are my relationships with other people being impacted by me being on a diet, by me being a person who is counting every little calorie? These things will happen and these are things you have to deal with. Being someone an extreme low body fat percentage is not very, very easy. And all the competitors, all the people who have done it will tell you that this is a very hard thing. And this is not sustainable all year round because you just can't fucking do it. And another thing with calories, a lot of guys have these weird numbers in their head. It doesn't matter what the, what the calorie number says, you have to keep reducing the calories, keep adding the activity if you're not burning fat. It's not uncommon, I mean, in my case, that I have to go at 1800 calories in order for me to burn fat. It just is what it is. When I'm at that extreme level of body fat, my body is fighting back. I have that big adaptation with my metabolism where I'm not burning more calories. I might be slouching more. My, my unconscious activity is simply my maintenance of my posture. I'm leaning down more. I'm more likely to sit down than stand up. All these things that are unconsciously happening that are preventing me from expanding calories. Your body is quite adaptive to fight you for that every calorie, for that every gram of fat that you're holding on. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick video on all the symptoms that I personally experienced. I really hope this will help you on your journey and I'm happy to be able to share this with you to kind of share my experience and what you can expect and on that journey. It's not an easy journey, but it's definitely worth it. You're gonna be proud of yourself. It's a journey that you're gonna learn so much more about yourself than you ever imagined and it's something that's gonna change your life. This will change your life. You will not be the same person if you reach that goal and that is the whole point of the journey is to make you a better self to get those lessons, to get those hard-earned lessons that most guys don't have the patience to get. And that's just the truth. And if you talk to people, they will be honest with you. They will tell you, hey, I just couldn't stand the hunger. I just couldn't stand the, the hours of activity that I had to put. I just couldn't stand the fact that, that I couldn't have sex with my girlfriend. I couldn't stand the fact that I was just too obsessed with food all the time. I couldn't stand the fact that I had to use a kitchen weight scale every single day for every gram of food that I was eating. And people will tell you that. They can't stand the fact that they're their strength levels are not where they should be. So that is something to consider. That is something to expect. That is the reality. That is the truth that you are supposed to beat, that you can beat if you believe in yourself, if you're that person who really wants it, if you have a strong why, you can do it. And that is the whole point of this video, to expect it to happen and to crush it and to get there and to be proud of yourself. So hope you enjoyed this quick video. Let me know in the comments below if you find this helpful. How do you resonate with these things? Have you already experienced some of these symptoms that I just mentioned in the video. And as well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to click that subscribe button, click it right in the face to support the channel and to get more awesome videos. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.